This is RT. Maritime dominance appears to be turning into a high-tech, high-stakes arms race in the East China Sea. China and Japan are vying for power in the disputed territory and its drones that are quickly coming to the forefront of the race. Let's get more on the matter now with James Corbett, editor of a Japan-based news website. Uh, Mr. Corbett, drones are in cheap, and acquiring fleets of them will cost an arm and a leg. Are both nations ready for the expense of this potential arms race? I think they are preparing to to be ready to commit more more resources to the uh, the military expenditures, and they're getting ready to do that even as we speak. And I think we see uh, really the start of a new normal here in in East Asia. As unfortunately, I think uh, tension, military tensions are going to lead to increasing military expenditures on both sides. And we already see that with Japan coming out this week, announcing uh, the defense ministry announcing an extra 100 billion yen in spending for the 2013 budget for the defense ministry. And uh, uh, still, Japan is only spending about 1% of its GDP on, uh, on defense. So there's a lot of room for growth. And I think that's exactly what we're going to be seeing as uh, Japan is looking to buy some more Global Hawk drones and China is launching some new uh, lineup to its, its own fleet of drones. So I think both sides are really preparing to, to ramp up military expenditures quite a bit right now. As both countries are preparing uh, to pump up the uh, defense uh, side of things, China's drones program especially is in its infancy. Can they really compete with a U.S. trained and supplied Japanese drones fleet? Well, that's a good question, and there's a lot of speculation about what the Chinese drone fleet is actually capable of. A lot of the specs and other things that have been released about their drones show that they are more or less clones of U.S. Uh, US craft. So, for example, there's the CH-4, the Wing Long, and the uh, Zhang Long. And these are, those are basically just clones of the, the Reaper, the Predator, and the Global Hawk, respectively. So it looks like China is really just attempting to clone U.S. technologies. And if they're successful in that, I suppose then it uh, is feasible that they'll be able to produce uh, drones that will be able to counteract the uh, Amer the American supplied Japanese drones. But uh, so far, uh, a lot of the drones that they've displayed, uh, certainly some of the newer ones they displayed last month, they haven't actually uh, shown any test flights of, or they haven't really shown their capabilities. So it's really up in the air as to whether China is able to pull this off at this time. But certainly they are developing the technology. Uh, Japan's also talking about raising its military budget. Uh, you said it's uh, now at 1% in, its, in terms of its defense budget. Uh, this is for the first time in more than a decade. You live there. How strongly do the people there feel about the standoff with China? I don't think it's something that filters down to the, the citizen level as much here as it does in China. And there's some new surveys that have come out just this week showing the public sentiment in China is uh, stirring in terms of nationalism once again. As, uh, again, these, uh, the dispute over these islands in the East China Sea is, is, is still a very much a focal point. And in fact, this week we saw the, uh, the Chinese ambassador called to Tokyo to, uh, to receive a formal protest from Japan about uh, a yet more territorial increase incursions of Chinese ships into the, the territorial waters of these islands. And China has d disputed that dispute. So it is unfortunately going around in circles. And I think we're going to see more and more of this because now that Abe is in power, he's known as a hardline nationalist. And now that Xi Jinping is taking the helm of uh, China for the next 10 years, I think he's looking to, to put his stake down as, as someone who can really uh, be a strong defender of China. So I think we're really going to see an entrenched position on both sides. And it looks like there is a new normal of uh, wars and increasing expenditures that are likely for the next several years. James Cobbett, editor of the Cobbett Report. Thank you.